when looking for restraint for giving our animals any medications or vaccines, we want to have their head restrained. So first of all, they're not swinging their head around to possibly hit you, the worker. As well, we want to make sure that their head is appropriately restrained. So when we place our vaccines or our medications, we're accurate, we're replacing them, and we minimize the risk of breaking needles or placing the, the medication in a method that's not labeled to do so. The main area that we're aiming to give them their injections is in their neck, but there is specific areas in their neck we want to avoid and other areas that are safe. If we're using the neck extender, safe areas are going to be a little bit higher up. So we want to be avoiding any of the veins that run low on the neck. You don't want to go into any vertebrae, which is just above. And if you palpate or feel along their neck, you can actually feel bone. So you want to avoid there. As well, right along the top, there's a nice big ligament that basically helps to hold their head up. So we won't be injecting in the muscle. So with our neck extender, we're going to be aiming pretty much in this type of triangle here. And if you're to go and press on it, it's soft, squishy, not really firm. So bone is sitting down here, vessels down here, nice big ligament on the top. We're going to aim in this small triangle in this area here. If you don't have the benefits of a neck extender, some shoots will allow you to open a side panel to access the neck. You can use that area. Or if you do have a neck extender and a full hydraulic shoot or whatever shoot you have that works, you can also access the neck further back on the animal. If we're looking for injection sites further back on the neck, your first landmark is to find their shoulders and their shoulder blades, which run angled like this. So we wanna be in front of the shoulder blade below the ligament so here's our ligament along here so below the ligament and above where the bone lies so it basically makes a nice big triangle here right in this area that's safe to inject you can give your sub q or your subcutaneous or your intermuscular or im shots there an alternative site to giving a subcutaneous shot other than in the neck is behind the shoulder blade so you can find your shoulder blade, so find your shoulder. You want to come behind, and this is actually called your scapula. You want to go behind the scapula, kind of right into this area, where you can actually make a bit of a skin tent. And we'll be injecting subcutaneous only behind the shoulder blade. Another easy landmark is look where their elbow finishes, down below. We can't see that with this shoot setup. Come up, and typically you'll always be behind the shoulder blade. And I'd like to inject in the down position in this zone here. We don't want to start getting too far back over the ribs, but your safe zones are in the neck, or if you have to, just behind the shoulder blade. So in picking which drug or vaccine to use, we want to look at using sub-Q or subcutaneous over intramuscular. The reasons behind that are it has less tissue trauma than injecting right into the muscle. With less tissue trauma, we see less bruising and you have a better carcass quality if they need to ever use any of that tissue or meat in the area that you've injected. So you can still use intramuscular, it's fine, it's still safe, but you'll often see a little bit more wastage on that piece of meat because of that injection site. When we're picking volumes to inject, we want to stay at under 10 mils per dose. That just ensures that we don't cause a large inflammatory response in the area. When we're looking at giving our injections, there is times that the volume of the total drug or vaccine that you're administering will exceed 10 mils. If that happens, what you need to do is give your 10 mil volume, pull your needle and syringe out of that injection site. You're then gonna look for about a hand width space up or down the neck and then place your needle and syringe back in that new spot inject another 10 mils alternatively you could use both sides of the neck so big goals is 10 mils per site and your sites aiming to be about a hand width apart if you do have to give multiple sites and can go on either side of the neck When looking at giving an intramuscular vaccine or drug administration, there's a couple things to keep in mind. The first thing to keep in mind is when looking at your injection site, we want to make sure that you're not injecting into the animal through any tag or major manure and debris. So in this area here, we would try and avoid injecting through all of this. When we look at our triangle on the neck, this area is nice 
there's not manure, it looks like it's in pretty good shape, so we can give our injection in there. If we start injecting through manure and tag, you run the risk of using your needle to go through the debris, which then can bring bacteria and foreign material into our injection site, increasing the risk of an injection site abscess, which can then make our drugs less active and also cause damage to our animal. So when we go to give our injection to our cow, we are gonna recheck our landmarks, shoulder blade, spine, ligaments, so we're gonna be aiming right in here. When you're ready to give your injection, if you're using a single dose needle syringe, you're going to uncap your needle, being conscientious where your needle is poking and pointing, because you don't wanna accidentally inject into yourself or any coworkers. You're gonna come forward, looking at your landmarks again, you can go ahead, quick stab in. Their hide can be tight. When you go to give your injection, you wanna be perpendicular to the skin, as you can see, and going straight in to the full length of your needle. When you go to recap a needle, be conscientious of where the sharp end is and where your cap is. If you're careful, you can go ahead and cap it using your alternate hand. If you're not confident with that, place your cap on a flat surface and then slide your needle into the cap, lifting it up and then press your cap on firmly. Once your cap is on, then you can discard your needle as needed. Another alternative for giving your vaccines instead of a single syringe is using your multi-dose syringe. By using your multi-dose syringe, you can actually set a volume to give your animal and that will be set for every single animal. So in this case, we're giving two mils for our injection. You'll be able to pull your trigger hand and it's going to administer the full volume that you've set. With your needles, you're able to use your needles for 10 to 15 animals before you have to change needles up. The rules with changing your needles though, if you ever bend a needle, it breaks off, or it feels like it's getting dull or has a burr on it, then stop and change your needle. You also wanna make sure when you go to reload your syringe that you change your needle to a fresh needle before you put the needle back into your drug or the vaccine. When we go to give a sub-Q injection, you can use a one-handed technique we'll use take your cap off we're going to come into our injection site at a 45 degree angle pop in once we're in pull release and pull out where things can become a little bit problematic is if you when you apply the trigger and squeeze to release your drug and administer it to your animal if it feels like it's stick or stiff and sticky, or just not going in easy enough, you're probably actually not fully through the skin and in the subcutaneous space. The subcutaneous space is under the skin, but above the muscle, and it should be a nice, easy administration. If it's at all showing resistance, then you may need to pull back out, try again, and make sure you go deep enough to get through the skin altogether. A second technique you can use is a two-handed technique where you perform a skin tent, which can sometimes make it easier to get into that subcutaneous space on the animal. If you're gonna use a skin tent, you're gonna pull the skin out away from the animal, making a tent, come in nice and close to the body, poke in, pull your trigger, release, and pull back out. When performing a two-handed subcutaneous injection, what you would do is you'd go to your injection site, you're going to use your, one of your hands and pull the skin out away from the animal. So it kind of brings it up and out. It's then gonna make a bit of a tent right here. This brings the skin away from the muscle and the part of your animal. And you're gonna place your injection close to the body, straight down into that skin tent. Give your vaccine or your drug, release the skin tent, and you can pull your needle out. When deciding if you're going to use a one-handed or a two-handed subcutaneous injection, consider the drug or the vaccine that you're administrating. By placing your second hand close to the animal, when you go to inject with your needle, it puts you at risk of accidentally injecting it into your own hand if the animal were to jump and move or if you're a little bit shaky and accidentally slip 
and inject into your cell. There are drugs out that you will be using on your farm that can cause major reactions if you accidentally inject yourself. We don't know if you use them off-label if they'll actually treat what you're trying to treat. So that could be costly because you'll still have to give a second or additional treatments. We also could see an increase in antimicrobial resistance and we won't be able to guarantee a withdrawal period for meat or milk. When looking at storing your drugs, you want to consider how the manufacturer wants them stored, in the fridge or on a shelf. You also need to consider and keep an eye on expiry dates and if your drugs become contaminated. So contaminated with blood, with rubber stoppers, with another drug, or even dirt and debris. If you're not storing your drugs properly or being mindful of your expiry dates and contamination, all of these things can affect your withdrawals for meat and milk as well as the effectiveness of that drug. Sometimes you'll prov be provided with a drug that needs to be reconstituted or a vaccine that needs reconstitution. It'll have a vial with powder in it and another vial with liquid in it, which is your sterile diluent. When you go to reconstitute, you'll use a reconstitution needle. You're going to place the plunger or the needle into the plunger, like so. Then you want to turn your fluid upside down and then place the transfer needle into the powdered vial. The powdered vial has a vacuum on it, which will actually draw the diluent through the transfer needle into the powdered vial. Once it finishes drawing, you can go ahead and remove your transfer needle, pull out. Sometimes you'll hear the little suction sound. That's normal and okay. Then before you administer this, you want to gently roll the vial back and forth between your hands or even gently invert until all of the powder is well mixed and is now a clean, clear solution with no bits. So I'd continue to mix until all these little bits were dissolved. Sometimes you're going to have to be able to treat your animals on the range or pasture where handling facilities are not readily accessible. One option is a remote delivery device system, such as using a dart gun. There's bows and arrows as well as jab poles that can also help you with this job. Regardless of the system you're going to use, things you need to consider. We want to be only injecting 10 mils per injection site. So even though this dart could potentially hold more than 10 mils, we wouldn't want to fill it past that. The other thing to look at is the type of needle. You want to use the needle provided for your dart or whatever system you're using. If it's intended for sub-Q, make sure we're aiming for a sub-Q type needle. If the drug's to go intramuscularly, you'd put a different needle on your dart. When you're going to administer your drug, consider how close you are to the animal. These dart guns and many of our range type devices pack a pretty big punch and if you are too close to the animal, you're going to increase tissue bruising and damage to the area that you're shooting for. So if you end up hitting them in the back end, you're going to see a lot more bruising in those rump muscles, which is something we want to avoid. Not all drugs can be low volume or less than 10 mils to get a full treatment. So using penicillin that might take 50 to 60 mils to treat, probably not the best choice for a remote delivery system. Once you've administered the drug to the animal and the dart has fallen out, when you go to retrieve the dart, make sure that the entire needle is still on the dart or the device and that no piece is broken off within the animal. 